Hi there, I'm Jessica York in the Dish Studio. One of the most anticipated series of the summer is the ninth and final season of Suits, which airs Wednesday nights on USA Network. Actress Meghan Markle of Suits has gone on to become Duchess Meghan in real life, but we'll have to wait to see if there are any other fairy tale endings on the series. Wednesday nights on USA Network. That's Channel 105 on Dish. What do you say we break out the can over? Right now, it's showtime. I told you it was worth the wait. You ready to be done? Oh, I'm just getting started. I let the enemy inside the game. You're going to blackmail him? You'll get disbarred. We need to put an end to it. There's only one way out. Suits, the final season on USA. Ooh, the love, the lies, and the lawsuits. How is this one going to end? Well, I got the inside scoop when I visited the set of Suits in Toronto. I sat down with the actors, including the newest cast member, Katherine Heigl, who was a super fan of the show before joining the cast. Samantha, whatever it is, it'll have to wait. We have to start locking up Robert's clients before... That's why I'm here. Three of them have already put their accounts up for review. Son of a... The bar just ruled on Robert yesterday. It gets worse. I reached out to six more, and none of them would take my call. Which means six more are about to go. And the only way that could happen this fast is if somebody's already poisoned the well. How delicious is the role of Samantha Wheeler? It's delicious. She's fierce. I love her. Yes. <laughs> I, and you play her so well. Thank you. Because I feel like when you first meet her in season eight, you're not quite sure what to expect. But then we see all these layers. And by the end of season eight, I was hooked. No oh, good. Yeah. And that it feels, was my plan. <laughs> and it feels like you were a perfect fit always for Suits. Were you a fan of the show before yes, you got cast? I was. Yeah. I was a big fan of the show. And had reached out to Aaron about a different project I was developing because I, you know, wasn't sure. This was back at, uh, towards the end of season seven, um, and it hadn't been announced yet whether or not they were going to do another season without um, Rachel and Mike. You know, uh, I assumed they weren't, I guess. And he quietly admitted to me on that phone call, like, "Well, I'm going to actually be busy because I'm doing the eighth season of Suits." And I kind of was like, "You need anybody? Because I'm available." And he went seriously, and I went, "Yeah." <laughs> really? That's and so here I, I am. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. Call, that's like a very Samantha Wheeler play, yeah, too. Yeah, you know, right? you just put shots. it all out there. Why right. not? What have I got to lose? Wow. So what was it like <laughs> coming into a cast that was already so well established like that? It was great. They were so welcoming. I was definitely nervous, I'm not going to lie. And uh, that first table read that I attended, I was like turning bright red, I could feel my ears going red. I was just so nervous. But they are so they were so embracing and so generous and decent and kind and fun and funny that like that. It just felt like I've been here forever. Yeah. You know? The fashion on this show is amazing. Yeah, oh yeah. I I mean I would wear everything that Samantha wears. I would wear everything that Donna wears. Yeah, me too. Katrina <laughs> also. Um, and the other thing I think is great is it's fashionable. But it's not like overly sexualized, oh, but it's yeah. very feminine. Yeah, no, you're right. That's true. I hadn't actually even thought of it like, like that, but you're totally right. They're, to me, these women always look chic and um, beautiful, but powerful. They, they aren't, yeah, they're not tossing it all out there trying to use their assets. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, to get ahead. You know, I've never wanted to play a woman who is trying to be a man in a man's world, you know, act like a man in a man's world. I wanted to see what what is what is it to be a strong woman that in, in a world that is typically male driven? Um, and how does she use that difference to her advantage? So I think the clothes are part of that and the fashion is a part of that. And it's just fun. Yes, <laughs> yes. So fun as a fan to watch all those outfits on them and just be like, oh, what I'd give for that belt or that dress or those shoes. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. was so fun. It's not as fun to wear. <laughs> it usually isn't, right? It's much more fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, yes. Now, for the people, and this is a very small audience, that haven't found suits can they jump right in in season nine? Absolutely, they can. Um, they can. It's just so much more fun to start at the beginning. And I would I would totally encourage people to go spend their summer binge watching the first seasons because it's well worth it. 
You think Hardman's still after us? I did, until I saw these notices were dated two days ago. And two days ago, Hardman was gunning to have me disbarred, not Robert. Exactly. Then who the hell knew to go after his clients? The same man that tried to blackmail Robert into taking his name off our wall. Blackmail? What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and I going to pay a visit to Eric Kaldor. So you just came from set, shooting season nine. Yes. Nueve. I think the Harveyisms are some of my favorite parts of this show. Do you have any favorite ones? You know what? I have to learn so much material every day that I don't remember a thing I've said. They all come in here and out there. There are some websites and I think uh, maybe some in Instagram pages where they're dedicated to Harvey quotes. So you can research that, but this guy right here doesn't have any of them in there. Now, when you saw that, you had to know, like, this show is catching traction if your character has now created its own Instagram accounts for just the, the one-off things that he says. Harvey, has it occurred to you it's possible that this isn't the worst outcome in the world? Yeah, and I could also get shot in the face, but that's not what we're talking about right now. You know, I've done extensive traveling, and when you see a lot of people coming up to you and recognizing you from the show and, you know, admiring the character so much and seeing him so iconic, that's when it was like, oh my God, this is really hitting with, you know, the audiences. People get off on this stuff. They love right? It. I mean, it's Harvey strikes a chord. He does. He is uh, impulsive, and he is very strong and demanding, but he's also got boundaries. I mean, he's a strong character. Sometimes, you know. You say impulsive, and it makes me worried about what we saw at the end of season eight. Please don't say it's just an impulse. We're really rooting here for Darby. Well, season nine opens up right where we left off, and so you'll see what happens at, um, towards the middle of the night. I have to imagine as an actor, sometimes it's like you have to work with people that you can't stand, yeah. and that's where your acting chops really right. come in. Right. But you guys actually knew each other before the show, yeah. and you guys have great chemistry on the show, and I would have to imagine that you knew before even getting to this show that you guys were going to be fine on set together. Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, yeah, well, there, you said it. I mean, Sarah and I have been friends for many, many years, and so... We take that and um, we've played with that along the way. And I think that's what makes our chemistry work. But, you know, I would also say that, you know, we are actors and we are creating this, you know, this imaginary world. This is not who we are in real life, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and, I, and I'd like to, you know, I guess pat us on the back, you know, each of us on the back for that, you know, that, that we've created that idea. You know, that, that's what was great about Friends, right? The Ross and Rachel for that first season, I think. I, I didn't watch so many years, but I remember that this push and pull, like, are they going to be together? Are they not? Are they, are they going to be together? And that's what I was suggesting early on in the piece. Like, we thought we were just working together, you know, as, as lawyer and assistant. But then it became, you know, then there was a flashback where they actually hooked up. So we're like, oh, oh, that's, that's involved, you know, because we weren't playing that. And then, you know, it worked out and it seemed like there were people rooting for us to be together. And so I think Aaron, along with the writers and Sarah and I, we all talked about it and we said, Let, let's just try and keep this going for as long as possible because, you know, the audience thinks that they want us together. But once we do get together, is that fire, is that still going to be, you know, alive and all of that stuff, so... Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was happy that it happened at the end of last season, and we've got 10 episodes to explore what their relationship is. Man, you're going to make me cry. I'm just getting started. Okay, <laughs> so um, enough with all the, the, the small talk. Okay. At the end of season eight, I think fans got what they really wanted to see. Let's talk Darby. Okay. All right, so when did you guys know that you as actors had phenomenal chemistry? Oh gosh, I think um, I think our chemistry probably stems from our 26-year friendship. Oh wow! We met back in 1993 doing theater at Williamstown Theater Festival, and um, we we were fast friends. It we've always had a relationship like we're brother and sister. We've been roommates. So when oh, and I should mention that Gabriel gave me the script and 
asked me to audition for the role of Donna. Really? So it's all because of him that I'm here. Wow. Um, I think early on on set, in some of our early scenes, in our interactions with each other, it was just so easy. We have um, a shorthand with each other and we really trust each other and we have so much fun with each other. So I think the writers just really leaned into our relationship and developed it. Now, was it like kissing your best friend then? <laughs> well, we were in character. Because <laughs> it the didn't more you look like you were kissing your best being friend. in your character, <laughs> uh, the easier that stuff is, for sure. Mm -hmm. And Donna is the, the voice of reason. She's the Lewis Whisperer, but she's also the Harvey Whisperer. Yeah. And slowly becoming the Samantha Whisperer. Right. Um, what is it like being the person playing the role of like basically the human life Alexa? Like you answer every everyone's problems, I questions. Know. I think it's, you know, it's been really great because I think walking around in someone's shoes who has so deeply developed their capacity for empathy as their superpower um, is a really warm and lovely place to be. So that's been great. Um, and I think people have responded to Donna's heart. Mm -hmm. She's always led with her heart. Um, her emotional intelligence is amazing. I think that's why she and Harvey weren't together the whole time because she has more, she has had more EQ than he has in the past. But at the end of season eight, we saw him, you know, show up at her doorstep, um, ready to be there for her emotionally. And I think she re recognized that on his face and that's why she invited him in, mm -hmm. in that moment. And fans all over were going, yes! <laughs> that makes me happy, I'm glad they were. The fashion on this show, especially Donna's wardrobe is, that would be my go-to wardrobe if I actually had a job where I had to be professional every single day. It's a dream closet, it's mm -hmm. really insane. In nine years on this show, I feel like I've been in graduate school of fashion. You know, getting up close and personal with these dresses that are made by these amazing designers and just learning. I can go through a closet and say, I think that's Jean-Baptiste Ville. Yes, I think that's Roland Ray. That looks like a Victoria Beckham. I can. Nice, <laughs> like... what a fun side, you know, side My plus. husband can do that with cars. Uh -huh. I can do it with dresses. <laughs> and have you taken any of them home with you? I'm, I, what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has Donna, uh, by any chance, uh, I think Sarah has borrowed Donna's clothes oh, from time to there time. There you go. I mean, you She's know. She's really generous with her friends. I'm it, not surprised. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, Lewis, I love his cup that says, you just got lit up. Yeah. What would your tagline be for Donna? Oh, early on, Donna said, I'm not apologizing for who I am. And the second I saw that on that page, I, I was like, oh, that's her mantra. That's who she is entirely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a, a better way to say sorry, not sorry. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And now if you had to or give... she might say, you're weird, we'll be friends. I did like it when she said that. <laughs> I like that one too. That's, that's t-shirt worthy. You're weird, we'll be friends. Mm -hmm. Alex, hey, just the man I was about to see. Listen, Harvey and Samantha, they're working on keeping Robert's clients, but they may need some backup. I want you to be ready. Well, Lewis, I don't know how ready I'll be when I can't even keep my own clients. What? Kessler just left us. Well, this isn't over. I'll just give him a call. You're not gonna be able to change his mind, Lewis. How do you know that? Because Harvey used up all of our goodwill when he asked him to lie for us. Well, look at you, another baller position. You see? Yes. Um, I feel like the writing is incredible, and I, you sure saw your chops at delivering those lines in West Wing. Is there a similarity here in terms of uh, scripts and just the length of dialogue and the passion? There's definitely a similarity in terms of the uh, the speed at which the dialogue is delivered and the jargon. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, And the it's, wit. It's, and, and the yeah. wit too, yeah. This, this is also the type of script that you have to, like Aaron's, well both show creators are named Aaron, that's a similarity. <laughs> but uh, Aaron Korsh's work is, is, is a, another type of thing where you, have to stick to the dialogue. When you stick to the dialogue and you find the rhythm of it, then it works. Mm -hmm. If you can't find the rhythm, then you're going to have trouble. And it's the same thing with Aaron Sorkin. If you can't find the rhythm of his dialogue, you're gonna have trouble. Right, yeah, good luck walking and talking. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you came on the show season seven, so were you a fan of Suits before you joined the cast? I was. I'd known about the show for years because I was on Psych on the USA Network when Suits came around. So I've known about the show and even I've known the, a lot of the actors at a distance. And so when I had a chance to come and join the cast, I, I loved it. I jumped at it. I love the style of the show. I'd always been a fan of the style of the show and how slick everyone looks and how slick everyone is in terms of how they handle their business. 
Um, to be able to come and play a character that had a, had a strong backbone and wasn't about to take any crap from anybody was thrilling for me. Now, is that why your wife is so happy on Instagram? Because I always see her and she's like, the world is great. Is that because you get all your arguing done at work? And then <laughs> and the fight's all out of you? <laughs> that, that probably is right, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like all my wittiness is gone at that point. Right. So, so, <laughs> so, so by the time I get home, it's, it's whatever you like, baby. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's a good reason to marry an actor. You okay. see? Gotcha. <laughs> That's funny. No, but I mean, and you talk about sharp and smooth, like, like, everyone on this show dresses oh, slick. so high. Oh, yeah. Why is there not a Suits line, like, on QVC or something? That is a very good question. I mean, I've, uh, I've wondered that myself, mm -hmm. that, that they didn't have a, a brand or even, a, you know, a Harvey Specter or something. Right, you know, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I guess that's more of a. I mean, maybe in season, final season, you know, is it time to kick it off. You know, may, maybe. <laughs> I think it's a very good idea. I think people would would buy the clothes because everyone I is put together exquisitely on this yes. show. Yes, yes. So with a show like this, how do you tie it up? Here's the thing. I think uh, Aaron Korsh is the one who has the answers. I I honestly could not even give you any spoilers because I do not know. One good thing about when you have a newborn at home is that your mind, <laughs> your focus is in different places. So, so really, I don't know what's happening. I know uh, up to episode six because I just read that. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they how they wrap everything up. I'm assuming with this show, when you have a show this long, that you're not going to leave any loose ends. Right. Because if you've not been able to wrap it up in nine seasons, <laughs> it's like there shouldn't be any loose ends at after nine seasons. Um, right. Unless there's going to be a story that spills over into Pearson, mm -hmm. then there may be some things left dangling Ooh. that could that could carry over. Oh, I hope so. I mean, I feel like fans will want that. Well, and look, I mean, when you have a, the good thing about when you have a spinoff and you have a spinoff of you know one of the main characters with Gina Torres, it's very easy to do that because she has a lot of skeletons in her closet that I'm sure <laughs> relate to Harvey Specter, relate to Lewis Litt. So I'm sure that you can uh, you'll you could possibly see some people showing up over there every once in a while. Katrina, what are you doing here so early? I need to talk to you. And I need it to be before this place is crawling with people. Okay. What is it? It's what everyone in this firm knows has to be done, and no one seems willing to tell Lewis. You mean taking Zane's name down? Yes, that's what I mean. He's not going to want to do it. You think I do? You know, not every show gets a second season, and certainly a lot of shows don't get a season nine. What do you think the magic is of Suits? I think from the very beginning, the writers did a beautiful job establishing, like we spoke about, strong female, strong male characters, interesting characters. Everyone had a very unique vision and voice and take on a world that we've seen before, but it was all uh, interesting and, and original. And then on top of that, the writing is quick and smart and really fun. And how fun is it to play Katrina? I feel like she's, I, I really last season we saw some more human side of her, yes. but she seems like that would be a fun character to play. She's a lot of fun. I think that last season was really special because we got to see her humanity. And for a long time, we've um, seen her strength and her facade that she puts forward at work. And last year we saw a lot of her, you know, gooey insides that she hides and she keeps a very professional face forward. Yeah. Now, when you first got the call that you were on Suits, had you seen the show before? Were you a fan? In season two, because mm -hmm. um, I started in season two. Not only had I seen the show before, I had auditioned for, I'm going to say, at least 10 different roles. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> Aaron Korsh was very familiar with me, and I was very familiar with the material of the show. So, yes. <laughs> You're like, I will get on this oh, show. I willed this into existence, absolutely. I love it. And the, the strong female power yes. roles are incredible here. Because I feel yes. like, you know, it's, it is the trend right now to have powerful female leads. But this is in, done in such a very respectful, not like you know, hopping on the trend way, I feel. Right, no, well, it's been going on for nine seasons. Mm -hmm. And even from the beginning, um, Jessica Pearson was sort of the the boss of the firm. And uh, Gina, Gina Torres, who now is starring on Pearson. Mm -hmm. And 
So from the very beginning, it set a very level playing field with men and women. There are no, uh, no weak ladies, but there aren't any weak men either. Everyone is very smart and has a very good argument and a very good stand and knows what they're doing. So that's been a nice draw to not play a victim at any point. Mm -hmm. And no spoilers, um, I know you may or may not know how the show ends, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how would you want the show to end. Bennett, if... Bennett, Bennett, and Bennett. Oh, okay. Bennett and Associates. Yes, you're very clear. <laughs> <laughs> no, let, let's see. I, oh gosh, because do I want the show to end where I, in my imagination, they're all living happily ever after, just winning cases and fighting crime and as one big kumbaya family. I don't know. I think, I think in my mind, the only thing I can really say uh, that I would like definitively is for Katrina to find peace and power. Why are you coming to me and not Harvey or Donna? Because it's going to come down to a vote. And without you and Lewis pushing the others, it's never going to happen. And if that's not good enough, because you owe me. If you had to give a tagline for season nine, what would it be? It's over. <laughs> Shut the door. Bye-bye. Yep. Match game. <laughs> it's done. Oh my gosh, that's a really hard question. Um, we're leaving it all on the dance floor. Specter Lit Wheeler Williams. There's okay. a lawyer for that. Spectre that's what the Lit. slogan should be. And if you had to give a tagline for the final season, what would it be? Cuckoo's Nest meets Breakfast Club. Oh. That's what this last 10 episodes was. <laughs> That's quite a combo. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Basically, because um, we lost Robert Zane and this new special master who's from the bar, this Faye Richardson character, um, she's basically a cross between Nurse Ratchet and the principal from The Breakfast Club. And we're, we're all in detention, so... And you're Judd Nelson in this. I think so. Yeah. I just hope I get to do a scene up in the rafters. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so out of all the lawyers, because you've been here since day one, that have graced the show, if you personally were in a, uh, a dilemma where you need legal counsel, who would you choose to represent you? Oh, man, it's such a tough question because the personal, I wouldn't pick one lawyer from any of these <laughs> people. They're all derisive, you know. <laughs> um, uh, oh, gosh, no. Um, <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I don't think I can answer that question. I do think Katrina would actually put a very good argument for it. Obviously, everyone wants Harvey. Samantha would be tough. She might break some laws, which could come back to bite you. I would want Donna. But Donna isn't technically a lawyer, but I'd want her definitely on my team. You know, Donna had this problem, actually. Uh, Harvey was her lawyer, and she freaked out and said that she wanted Lewis to be her lawyer. You know what, it depends on the case. If you were caught in a legal bind, who would you hire as your attorney? Oh, probably Donna, and she's not even an attorney, so I don't know. She, is, she has a good voice of reason. Yeah, but yeah. She's so she, her intuition, her special gift of mm -hmm. understanding everyone and everything, and her ability to diffuse every bomb. Yeah, yeah. that's a good lawyer. Of the current cast? Mm -hmm. Of the current cast, I would say Harvey Specter. I mean, okay. Harvey, Harvey always wins. And let's open it up to over nine seasons. I would say Jessica Pearson. Oh, okay. I th Jessica Pearson is the only one that I think if she went head to head with Harvey, mm -hmm. would whip his ass. Oh, maybe. I, I really think so. I mean, I, th I think if they went to head to head, because Jessica didn't play, Jessica would be the one that I would not want to go against in a courtroom. And if I had a real issue, I would want Jessica to come in. You know, she should have her own show. Let's talk to the people should. at USA. Let's yeah. make that happen. Wanna, what would you call it? I want to know what's going on with Pearson. Mm -hmm. I would call it Pearson. Our home is under attack, and I can't defend it on my own. This is a court order granting me full control of your firm. They've installed someone to watch every move we make. How do we stop it? Don't bother Harvey. I'm out of here. Whose damn side are you on? And there's no way I will ever betray Lewis Lee. This isn't your firm. It's mine. You can hand in your resignation. I always have time for an old friend. Suits, the final season on USA. 
so fun. It is going to be an unforgettable final season of Suits, airing Wednesday nights on USA Network. That's channel 105 on DISH. And if you've missed any of your favorite USA Network shows, we can help you out. If you're at home and your HD DVR is connected to the internet, you can watch USA On Demand. And if you're on the go, you can watch the best of USA Network with Dish Anywhere. My thanks to the cast and crew of Suits. Don't miss the final season of Suits Wednesday nights on 105. It is going to be crazy. I'm Jessica York in the Dish Studio.